Malaria is a particularly nasty disease, being responsible for more human deaths than virtually anything else. More than war, more than famine, more than accidents, more than animal attacks, more than any other microbial pathogen. Malaria itself is caused by an amoeba known as Plasmodium, and of its various strains, the most dangerous one for humans is the Plasmodium falciparum. This particular Plasmodium pathogen sits atop a veritable mountain of human bodies, being responsible for more deaths than anything else humans have ever encountered in our history. There was once a time where this mountain of human bodies did not exist. There was once a time where malaria couldn't even infect humans. The malaria parasite existed, and it was infecting animals like gorillas, but it had not mutated sufficiently so as to be able to infect humans. This state of things obviously changed at some point in the past, as malaria can most certainly infect us now, but how exactly this change came about has largely remained in the shadows of mystery. Now, a new study coming out of the Velcom Sanger Institute and the University of Montpellier has analyzed the genetic roots of malarial infection in humans, and the researchers have uncovered the series of events that most likely led to this most terrible evolutionary outcome. Here is a long quote from the abstract of their study. I'll go through this uh, rather long passage and then explain what it means. So, the researchers say, quote, One gene, RH5, which encodes an essential ligand for the invasion of host erythrocytes, is suspected to have played a critical role in this host switch. Genome comparisons revealed an introgressed sequence in the ancestor of P. falciparum containing RH5, which likely allowed the ancestral parasites to infect both gorilla and human erythrocytes. To test this hypothesis, we resurrected the ancestral introgressed reticulocyte binding protein homolog 5, or the RH5 sequence, and used quantitative protein interaction assays to demonstrate that this ancestral protein could bind the basidian receptor from both humans and gorillas. We also showed that this promiscuous receptor binding phenotype of RH5 was shared with the parasite clade that transferred its genome segment to the ancestor of P. falciparum, while the other lineages exhibit host-specific receptor binding, confirming the central importance of this introgression event for plasmodium host switching. Finally, since it's transferred to humans, P. falciparum and also the RH5 ligand have evolved a strong human specificity. We show that this subsequent restriction to humans can be attributed to a single amino acid mutation in the RH5 sequence." Unquote. All right, so that was kind of a beefy passage full of technical terminology, so let's break it down. Some vocab words to start. When they say erythrocytes, that's another word for red blood cells. And when they say the basidian receptor, this is just a particular type of receptor that's expressed on the membranes of red blood cells. So there's this gene called the RH5 gene, and it codes for a small protein that can bind to the basidian receptor on human blood cells. When it binds to the receptor, it allows the pathogen to attach to, and then enter and infect, a host red blood cell. There's a bit of evolutionary history involved here too. The original RH5 gene was generated by the gorilla parasite Plasmodium adleri. The gorilla parasite would eventually share some genes, through lateral gene transfer, with the ancestors of the Plasmodium falciparum, and these shared genes included the RH5 gene. This zoonotic exchange is thought to have happened about 50,000 years ago, when individual amoeba from both the Adleri and falciparum clades infected the same gorilla cell, and thus they came into close physical proximity with each other. It's kind of like if you have two advanced military recon teams from two allied forces, and they're both operating in the territory of a shared enemy. In the course of their operations, both of these recon teams just so happen to meet up with each other in the field, where they then exchange intel on the enemy's defenses. This is, metaphorically, what the two plasmodium strains did in the gorilla cell 50,000 years ago. 
This dual infection of a single cell is called an introgression event, and it's extremely rare. When the researchers used sequence reconstruction techniques to generate the original gene transferred between these ancient plasmodium lineages, they found that it generated a protein that could bind to a certain type of receptor, the basigin receptor, which exists on both gorilla and human blood cells. To quote the lead author, Dr. Francis Galloway of the Velcom Sanger Institute, he said, quote, The fact that this ancestral RH5 protein was able to bind to the red blood cell receptor basigin from both humans and gorillas immediately provided a molecular explanation for how Plasmodium falciparum evolved to infect humans, unquote. Now, in the course of their study, by regenerating the original gene sequence, the researchers were able to compare it to the modern-day gene sequence, and they found six differences between the archaic and the modern gene. And one of these differences resulted in the loss of ability for Plasmodium falciparum to bind to the gorilla version of the Basigian receptor. This particular mutation made P. falciparum unable to infect gorillas, but now it could only infect humans. The other mutations served to make P. falciparum a more effective human pathogen, able to more efficiently invade our blood cells and to more elusively evade our immune cells. The result has been 50,000 years of human misery and death on a scale unmatched by virtually any other pathogen. The sheer scale of the malaria problem makes this discovery really remarkable and extremely exciting. Now that we've identified this particular molecular avenue for infection, we can begin to develop new medicines that target the RH5 ligand, or the Basigian receptor. Ideally, these new medicines that we can imagine on the horizon will create a malaria cure or a more effective treatment, or a vaccine, or, or something that can stop the deadly infection of this most merciless pathogen.